Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm going to show you how to render leopard print. Leopard print comes in so many incarnations. We have leather. We have it on fabric. It looks like a, like a type of satin. It comes in a faux fur. And this looks like maybe suede or pony skin, okay? Which actually doesn't come from ponies, okay? And so I'm going to show you tips and tricks on how to do all different kinds of leopard print. Okay. For materials, I'm trying this paper out for the first time. This is the Borden and Riley Smooth Cotton Comp 100% Pure Rag Marker Paper. Not tried this yet, except to test out some colors, so we'll see how that goes. A bunch of other things here. I'm going to list the tools that I use in the description box. Whenever I am illustrating a pattern fabric, I have a list in order of how I tackle the pattern fabric. Number one, select your media. Sometimes the media is chosen for you by your boss, by your teacher, or you just do whatever the hell you want. Today I'm going to demo with marker and with colored pencil. If you want to watercolor or gouache leopard print, you can use the same method I show you in the marker rendering. All you have, the only difference is you have to wait for layers of paint to dry when you're painting. Marker dries really fast, so you don't have to wait. When you have something smooth like this or like this, you can really use anything. When you have something fuzzy like this, fuzzy, furry, more textured, I like using color pencil, whether I mean, I usually don't do color pencil as my main medium. I generally use it as a texture touch. So I will do most of it in marker and then go in with some texture if I feel like I need it. Okay, so select your media, select your colors. Now, when I was testing the swatches, uh, when I was testing colors for this demo, I was trying out both sides of the paper like I usually do and I discovered that I prefer the underside of this paper. Dun -na -dun -na -dun -na -dun -na -dun. You know, longtime viewers know that I'm not going to run out and buy every color I need for each video. I'm just going to get as close as I can. So with, you know, these leopard prints, there's actually a lot of colors, okay? You can get more like cool tone, you know, more taupey, and then you can get more orangey, warm tone. This is a Derwent Color Soft Peach. This is a Caran d'Ache Luminance Raw Umber. And I chose this as kind of my shadow color, more cool tone. Now, you'll see that, basically, what's happening here, or the leopard print kind of looks like this. And then some have these like inside pieces. Some of them are all broken up like this, you know, those kinds of like weird nebulous shapes that aren't, they're not precise spots, okay? When they say leopard spots, it's not actual spots, okay? So I draw the basic like shapes like that, but again, depending on your swatch, some of these are very rounded and some of them are more jagged. So pay attention to your swatch. Let's say I'm doing this one right now because of the cool tones. And so I want to do a more jagged, hairy. And then the center of these spots are a darker color, this kind of khaki color. Some leopard prints don't have that. See, there's so many varieties. You need to really be aware of your swatch or your visual reference that you're using for your illustration. So this is my Prismacolor, what is this? Bronze, but it's not metallic. And I'm gonna go in here in the middle of these sections, right? To create that. That's the basics of the color pencil leopard print. And then with marker and paint, Prismacolor Brick Beige, I'm mimicking this one more the warmer one. I do have the light walnut for shadowing my base color, which is not as important right now. And then I have my black. And again, I'm going to 
put in these sort of like funny little shapes. And then I'm going to take the darker color. This is my spectra in tan. And I'm going to go in there in the middles and put in that color. Whenever you contaminate your colors with a darker color, always make sure you clean off your nibs for the longevity of your marker. Again, this technique can be done with paint exactly like this. Just wait for your layers of paint to dry. So we have our media, we have our colors. Next, we're going to draw our garment. If you have problems drawing garments, refer to my drawing clothes on body series. So one, we're gonna uh, draw the garment with the wraparounds. This wraps around her leg and this wraps around her leg like this and this wraps around her neck and these wrinkles wrap around her elbow. Our bodies are basically a bunch of cylinders. And so our clothes wrap around and they create the round shapes. You're going to think about the drape of your fabric. So we have something that is thin and fitted to the body very closely. You have something like this that is very boxy and thick and fat and hairy. Okay, so you have to pay attention to the drape, the texture, and the thickness of your specific fabric. If you want to learn how to draw fur and render fur, I have a whole video on fur. It's one of my way earliest videos. When you draw fur, you have to keep in mind the thickness of fur, and that's why I'm drawing so far away from her body. For this one, for the sheath dress underneath, I'm gonna mimic this one. So we've drawn our garments, we've considered uh, the wraparounds, and we've considered the drape and the thickness and the texture of the fabric. So now we're going to fill in our background color and add in our shadows of the background color. That was light umber 30%. Let's pretend our light source is over here. Drop shadow under the jacket, dark side on the hip, a little bit of the in between the legs, walking kind of shadow like that. And that is Copic Bisque E30. So for this jacket, I'm just gonna use the warmer colors just so we can see the difference. And for fur, I do prefer a brush tip. I don't need it, but especially if you're a beginner, it'll probably be helpful to you. And again, this side gets the shadow because it's away from the light. The jacket overlaps. I did it the wrong way. Okay, whatever. But when the jacket overlaps, especially on a fat fabric like this, you're going to see that overlap shadow. The collar is going to drop a tiny shadow onto the body of the jacket. And then this side, of course, is going to get the shadow away from the light. Armpits are always dark. Okay. So we have the base color. We have the shadows. Okay. And when you're doing a pattern, if you watched my uh, how to render any striped fabric video, then you know that I went into grain line studies and the direction of the grain and how it affects that. But with, with leopard print, it's random. Okay. Um, there's like a general up and down direction, but it's not as strict and showing off the grain and the direction of the grain like stripe is. So we don't really have to get into grain line studies for, uh, leopard print. We do, however, have to scale down the fabric correctly. So I use the palm to palm method. Okay, so if you have a fabric swatch, put it next to your palm and see how it scales to your palm. I chose these two samples because you can see the hand in each photo. So in this one, that's the size of her palm. And you can see, you know, that's one spot, that's another spot, that's a weird thing here, and that's kind of the size. And so here, her palm is about, it's a little bit bigger. It's close, but it's a little bit bigger. You know, her hand is here. And, but her overall print is bigger in scale than this one. So again, pay attention to your fabric. 
Are we going to, should we turn this into a drinking game? Every time Zoe says, look at your fabric, take a shot. Is that age appropriate? Don't do that if it's not legal in your country. So the scale is a bit bigger. So we should reflect that. Now, as I do this, keep in mind, there's a seam here. There's two seams and I did that on purpose, okay? Can you see how the fabric pattern breaks at the seam here? Okay, I want you to show that in your rendering. Also, another common mistake that I see students make is they don't take their print to the edge of the fabric because they're afraid of making mistakes or whatever, but the pattern goes all the way to the edge and wraps around the sleeve and wraps around to the back. Okay. I call this the halo effect where students, they're so scared. They like just, they put the pattern here, but you need to sometimes put it right on the edge so that it looks like it's wrapping around to the back. All right. You'll see that this one, the pattern, the dot, the spots are more closed. Also this one. This one, they're more open. You see that it just looks like four spots instead of an actual enclosing circle. Again, pay attention to your fabric. Oh no, I said it again. This is the part where things start looking real tedious. And so students will start doing this thing where their spots start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When I look at an illustration, I can tell when a student start, started getting tired. Do not grow your print, whether you're doing polka dots or a stripe or a plaid. Do not start making things bigger because you're tired of rendering. <laughs> Trust me, I am so aware of the temptation. And if you want to make it look a little bit more zigzaggy, I take the absolute tiniest little tip of my brush, my brush tip just so lightly. It's almost like I'm hovering over the paper and being so light with it. Check the color ratio. Like this is very black. The lines are thick and they're very, the spots are very close together and you want that look on your rendering too. You see how black this is? You know, the background color to black spot ratio proportion. You want them, the spots, to be as close together as they are on your example. And this one, there's no center color. Like this one has an obvious center color. These have obvious center colors, but this one doesn't. So now you're done. This one, okay, the differences are, number one, it's fuzzy. Number two, the spots are way more irregular. Like, you know how this one, the spots are much closer together in size. This one, the sizes are totally all over the place. I chose these four examples on purpose, okay? So you can see a whole range. So this one, the shapes are very irregular. The sizes are very irregular. And there's a definite different colored center. And the spacing, there's more spacing in between the spots. You see the black to background ratio here and the black to background ratio here. There's more space. So we're going to show all those things in this rendering. Okay, so we have like all these weird shaped ones and they're kind of like all over the place. And the shapes are just everywhere. And then you have like all these little spots. Don't forget to go to the edge. Don't forget to stop at the seams, at the edges of your fabric. And notice how far apart the pieces are and how in general everything, all those spots, the largest spots are still smaller than these spots. I am still trying to make things look a bit hairy and fuzzy and irregular, not smooth. Okay. Not like that one where everything is like really smooth. Okay. And then in this one, there is definite center ones. But since we are doing a warm tone one, going back to my Spectra Tan 087. So it's this texture with this color story. 
And then I'm gonna go in, emphasize some of the texture with a color pencil, and then show some of that soft silhouette. Not too shaggy, I think I'm starting to make it a little too shaggy, but you could do that. Or you could do it with color pencil if you really wanted to show a very fuzzy texture. Color pencil is great for really showing off a fuzzy texture. Nothing beats it. I would typically do this where the background, I do it very quickly with marker, and then I do the texture showing things with color pencil. You could do the whole thing with color pencil. And then again, there's my my shadow color. I'm trying to, I'm using the side of my pencil so that I can get a fuzzy texture without drawing individual hairs. And I'll go in with my base color again and if I want to blend some of this out. And then I'm going to take my black and again, I'm mimicking this one. So the spacing is far, the shapes are very strange and irregular, it's fuzzy. And then this is Prismacolor Bronze. Another thing you can do if you really want the black to show up is to use a fine liner. This is a Staedtler brand. And put that on top of your color pencil. And again, go back in with that bronze for the centerpieces. So if you want a more potent black, you can use that fine liner on top of your color pencil if you like. Or if you have something like this where the leopard print is very small in scale, you can just do the whole, like you could do all these with fine liners instead. Or fine tip markers, what have you. I know that looks like a very bizarre outfit comprised of. <laughs> That's hilarious looking. Anyway, but I do think I got my point across on how you can render pretty much any kind of leopard print fabric, regardless of the background fabric, regardless of your color story, regardless of, you know, what kind of spot iteration you're getting. All right, so you know the drill, hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic because we are not made of magic, we are made of practice. Hashtag if your first one sucks, you're right on track. Don't forget to like this video if this video was helpful for you and if you would like me to do more rendering videos in the future. And I will see you in the next video.